Let us understand the operon concept in prokaryotes with lac operon as an example. In this video, we will be discussing lac operon and its components, lac operon in different contexts in the absence and presence of glucose and lactose, and positive regulation by CAP CMP complex within 5 to 10 minutes. So, this is the lac operon. It has a promoter sequence, which is a DNA sequence to which this RNA polymerase binds and initiates transcription. Then there is an operator sequence and that is followed by structural genes. In LAC operon, the structural genes are LAC EZ, LAC Y and LAC A. This promoter, operator and structural genes together constitute an operon. Or an operon is a cluster of related genes under the control of a single promoter. The expression of these related genes are regulated together. In the upstream of promoter, there is one more sequence which is called as the regulatory sequence or regulator. In lac operon, it is lac I that codes for a lac repressor protein. So, this is a lac repressor protein. This repressor protein can bind to the operator sequence, inhibiting the transcription of structural genes by this RNA polymerase. Or binding of this repressor protein to this operator prevents the movement of this RNA polymerase, thereby inhibiting the transcription of the structural genes. In the absence of this repressor protein, this RNA polymerase can further proceed and can transcribe the structural genes and forming an mRNA. The set of genes in this operon are transcribed together under the single promoter, forming a polycystronic mRNA. That means multiple proteins are encoded by a single mRNA molecule, as you see here. This lac is a gene codes for a protein which is called as beta galactosidase that is involved in breaking down this lactose, which is a disaccharide, into glucose and galactose. This lac Y gene codes for permease, a protein that facilitates the entry of lactose into the cell. And LAC A codes for transacetylase. The exact function is not known. So these are the components of LAC operon. Now let us see how this operon works. Case 1, glucose is present and lactose is absent. And this is a normal condition. Prokaryotes like E. coli prefer glucose as the primary nutrient source. Lactose is only used as an alternative to glucose if glucose is absent. So lactose is absent, glucose is present and glucose is the preferred carbon source. So in the presence of glucose, the genes that is involved in the metabolism of lactose should be turned off or lac operon should be off. In this condition, this RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and this regulator sequence that is lac I is transcribed to mRNA and forms the repressor protein. And this repressor protein binds to the operator sequence, inhibiting the movement of RNA polymerase, thus preventing the transcription of the structural genes. So transcription is blocked. So lac operon is generally repressed or in normal condition in the presence of glucose, as glucose is a preferred nutrient for E. coli or prokaryotes. Lac operon is generally off. That is why this is called as a negative regulation. In the absence of lactose, there is no need of transcribing the structural genes that is involved in the metabolism of lactose. Case 2. If glucose is absent or low and lactose is present, then these prokaryotes or E. coli uses lactose as an alternative nutrient to glucose. So lactose is present, glucose is absent or very low. In such a condition, as we know that generally under normal condition, this operator is bounded by this suppressor protein. So, this RNA polymerase can now transcribe the structural genes. So, lac operon is turned off. So, in the presence of lactose, this lactose is inside the cell is converted to allolactose. Allolactose is an inducer. This allolactose can bind to the repressor protein as you see here. Allolactose binds to the repressor protein. 
and causes the detachment of this repressor protein from the operator, as you see here, making this repressor protein inactive. Now RNA polymerase can further proceed and transcribe the structural genes, forming an mRNA and forming all the proteins like beta-galactosidase, fermis and transacetylase that is required for the metabolism of lactose. So in the presence of lactose and absence of glucose, lac operon is turned on to utilize the alternative nutrient source that is lactose. Here allolactose functions as an inducer by binding to the repressor protein making it inactive. That's why lac operon is called as an inducible operon. Now the third concept, a positive regulation of lac operon or induction by catabolite activation. Catabolite activator protein, also known as CMP receptor protein, that binds to CMP or cap CMP complex. That binding is essential for high levels of lac operon transcription. Let me make it more clear. In the presence of low glucose, ATP synthesis will be low. ATP present inside the cell is converted to CAMP. So there will be a rise in CAMP level that actually signals the deficiency of glucose. And CAMP binds to catabolite activator protein forming a complex and that binds to a specific site which is often called as cap site near the promoter as you see here. And this binding of CAMP cap to this cap site enhances the transcription of the structural genes by this RNA polymerase. In high glucose condition, in, if there is high glucose in the medium, ATP will not be converted to CAMP, therefore CAMP level drops, there won't be any complex formation, so there will be low transcription, low level of transcription of the structural genes. Remember, allolactose is essential Allolactose ensures that the operon is allowed to function or it binds to the repressor protein and making it inactive so that the operon is on. Once the operon is on, the CAMP-CAP complex boosts or ensures high level of transcription if the operon is on by the activity of inducer allolactose. Once the operon is on, the CAMP cap binding to this capside actually boosts or enhances the rate of transcription. Hope you are clear. So let me summarize. First condition, low glucose or glucose is absent and presence of lactose. Then lac operon is on. The alternative nutrient source to glucose, that is lactose, is used by the bacterium. In the presence of high glucose and absence of lactose, lac operon is off. And this is a normal general condition and glucose is a preferred primary nutrient or primary carbon source for prokaryotes. In the third condition, low glucose and absence of lactose, then also lac operon is off as there is no lactose in the medium. So there won't be any allolactose formation to make that repressor protein inactive. And final context is same concentration of glucose and lactose. Glucose is a preferred nutrient source, but as lactose is present, there will be very low level of lac operon activity. Hope you are clear. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexams for it.com.